audio check. All right, fantastic. Uh, good morning, folks. Uh, my name is Phil Gallagher of Thraven University. I'm a big death and taxes enthusiast. And today I'm going to be streaming with Direfleet Daredevil in the legacy of, of all things, believe it or not. Um, I, I played around with this last night and I went 6-4 in competitive leagues. That was two 3-2 three, two finishes. Um, and I won one game in the tournament practice room while I was just like seeing how Direfleet Daredevil worked. For anyone who's not familiar with the card, it is a 2-1 first striker for one and a red. That is sort of like a reverse Snapcaster Rage. When it enters the battlefield, I exile a card, an instant or sorcery from my opponent's graveyard, and then this turn I can cast it, and I can spend my mana as though it were any color to cast the spell. Um, and if the card would be put into a graveyard this turn, I exile it instead. So this is going to allow our deck to uh, do some really, really weird things. I'm streaming too much. I can't keep up with watching the videos at this pace. I don't exactly want to apologize for that, but I understand. Um, you know, uh, my, my, reg my regularly scheduled stream times that I actually need to put below the stream are uh, Monday and Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock Eastern. But then when I get bored and I don't have anything to do for a couple hours, I, I usually just jam a league. And if I'm Feeling talkative, I go ahead and uh, and just stream it anyway. So last night, Direfleet Daredevil did a lot of things. Most of the time, it just grabbed a one mana spell of some nature, and that might not sound like the most exciting thing in the world. But when you're a deck that isn't supposed to brainstorm or ponder, and you brainstorm and ponder, it's really sweet. Uh, so like, at one point last night, I think I vialed in. Direfleet Daredevil, brainstormed, drew my cards, I think I put back a Batter Skull, and then I used either a Fetchland or a Stoneforge to shuffle it away, and then I got the Batter Skull right back, and so like I got a lot of value out of that brainstorm. And that's sort of the floor of what this card can do. When the card is good, oh boy, is it really, really good. So like, Here's a couple of screenshots from last night. Um, here's me lightning bolting my opponent for lethal when they were presumably safe because they had a Jace on board. Not so much. Uh, here's another time where it picked up two pieces of equipment and due to its first strike ability, it just beat out two Gurmag anglers in combat. Oh, that's nifty. Um, I forget exactly what I did with the Dire Fleet Daredevil this game, but I think I did something like um, use it to flash back a bolt and bolt one of my opponent's creatures or something like that. Or this might have been another one of the games where I, I used it to ponder a brainstorm and then shuffle with the Stoneforge. I don't remember exactly. A, a lot of them blurred together. Um, but it, it does a lot of really neat and interesting things. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Phil. Do you ever sleep or just stream? Well, I have a really... Really regimented schedule. Um, like, there's the anime. I have to watch a lot of that. I have to... Uh, on average, I'd, I'd say I play, like, a league a day. I don't always stream them. But, you know, in, in a week, I probably end up playing, you know, five leagues on average. Like, I, I play a lot of Legacy, a lot of Death and Taxes. Um, and then I have to sleep a little bit. And, and do other things like prep panels for anime conventions, keep up with the website, you know, look at pictures of cats and, uh, and memes on Reddit. Um, so I'm, I'm a busy guy, but I, I, I find the time to, to stream here and there. Um, because I added the Dire Fleets, I made a couple of changes to the deck. Um, since I want red a little bit earlier than I normally do, I added one Cavern of Souls at the cost of a Rashadden port. And I trimmed a rest in peace from the sideboard for a Sanctum Prelate. Um, because rest in peace and Dire Fleet Daredevil is a non-bow. And uh, then I cut my Cataclysms for another Prelate and a Pontiff. The Pontiff was hard to cast and underwhelming last night. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut the Pontiff. Um, I thought I made changes to this deck last night. Um, I was thinking about adding in a Surgical Extraction. Uh, 
Um, doesn't Legacy do, or excuse me, doesn't SCG do Legacy F and M? Uh, they do Legacy on Thursday nights. Um, I haven't been going out to the storefront to play Legacy a lot um, because I get better practice on Moto than I do at the store. Um, our our local metagame in Roanoke is like super super weird. We've essentially hated out all the blue decks. Like there's almost no Delver or Miracles or anything of that nature. Because our metagame is so full of Chalice of the Void. Like, my god, everyone in Roanoke loves Chalice of the Void. Between, like, Bomberman, Eldrazi, um, for a while I ran a Death and Taxes build that had Chalice in it, in the storefront, um, Agro Loam. Like, we are a Chalice metagame. Like, in a lot of our top eights for our local events, there are more Chalice of the Voids than there are Brainstorms. Which is absurd. Um, so, like, locally, I don't get to play against a lot of tier 1 decks. Because, like, we hated out all of the blue decks. So, like, in if I play Legacy on a Thursday night, I will probably not play a blue deck. Like, I'm more likely to play against, like, Agrolome, Eldrazi, Eldrazi, Burn, Bomberman, or something like that in an evening. Than I am to, like, see a Brainstorm. And, like, anyone who is playing blue decks tends to, like, play Abrupt Decay blue decks because, like, it's just necessary to deal with all the chalice that's running around. Uh, so, li life's a little little weird uh, in, in Roanoke in that regard. Um, they also stopped making our, our local events EE satellite events, uh, which was really pushing me to come out because I was grinding points towards that. Um, but our attendance and legacy events dipped a bit, and, and that stopped. So, um, I go out for any of our legacy events that matter, that are, like, old IQ in size, but not IQ in name now, because, um, you know, they restructured how they're doing those, but when the store has something that matters for Legacy, I, I always go out without fail. Um, not sure about the surgical in the last slot of the sideboard, but otherwise I, I think I like where this deck is at. Um, if I don't have the surgical, I have Priest, Rip, Rip, and two Direfleet Daredevils as potential graveyard hate. So having one more Graveyard Hate piece is fine, but whether this is supposed to be like a Surgical or a Containment piece, Priest, or a Graft Digger's Cage, I'm not exactly sure. Um, I'm not a big fan of Fairy. Like, I know I have three Recruiters in this build, um, but I, I've talked about this a lot. I'm not overly impressed with Fairy. Uh, can it support Council's Judgment? Yeah, it, it can. Um, Council's Judgment is a reasonable card. I don't tend to play it in the red-white build. Um... Just because, like, if one of my game plans is to Magus of the Moon, and if I'm leaning a little bit more heavily on Cavern of Souls for mana, then I don't necessarily want to put more white-white cards in my deck. So if I compare this to, like, uh, where is it? My Crusader build. If you look at how many white-white cards there are here, plus the white-white cards in the sideboard, like, there's just so much. Um, so I've shied away from... A lot of white white cards in the red white build and instead i have more utility uh with things like leo and relic order in the board to help balance that out um i also don't think i need council's judgment because i'm sort of more value oriented in the main deck with like these dire fleet daredevils and the pnk and the palace jailer than a lot of other builds so like i think it's fine um again not not 100 convinced on the surgical but like i'm gonna give it a shot and see how it goes uh, was my most powerful play with Daredevil. Um, I showed this at the beginning of the stream, but just to show it again, like, here I am lightning bolting my opponent for lethal. So I cast Recruiter of the Guard off Cavern of Souls, got Direfleet Daredevil, cast Direfleet Daredevil, and bolted them. And they just died, even though, like, they probably had my board on lockdown, even though they probably had a removal spell, so, like, I wasn't presenting lethal. Like, they had what looked like a safe board, and and that was that. That was the end. Um, so, I, how did I get in cues? I don't want to do cues. I think the, the ceiling for how good Direfleet Daredevil can be is very, very high. Um, and the floor is that, like, he is just a 2-1 with first strike. And, and that may or may not be good enough. We'll, we'll see. Um, 
I definitely like it enough to continue testing with the card. Like, I'm 100% sure of that. Like, it is... It is very interesting. I got to do a lot of unusual things. And there were a lot of weird things that I was really close to doing, but didn't quite get to do because, like, the game ended or something went wrong. Playing against Sizzle, and my hand looks okay. I'll take a better look at it in a second. I do not have any data on my opponent. Um, this is sort of a mediocre hand um, on a second look here. I'm going to keep it. It's a little soft. But if my opponent is on a creature-based deck and I get to Swords of the Plowshare, their first threat, and then, like, port them and get some value off of this Dire Fleet Daredevil, um, this hand is probably fine. Um, this hand also gets a lot better with, like, just any reasonable creature draw. Not leading on the Windswept he Heath here because I'm going to need it to fetch a Plateau. Alright. Opponent's playing Burn, and I'm going to get to get their first guy with the Swords to Plowshares. Which is neat. This is a exactly the sort of thing I want to see. Not Burn necessarily, because it's not a great matchup. Um, drawing that Plateau is nice. Um, and here I have to decide whether I want to... Dire Fleet Daredevil for no value, just to get a guy in play, or whether I want to wait a turn to get value. And I think I want to wait a turn to get value. Because, like, if I wait a turn, I'll, I will very likely get three more damage off of it, because my opponent will cast a bolt of some nature, so that would make up for me missing one attack. Um, and I don't just want to play this out and get it removed, because it's my only creature. So, I'm... Okay, waiting one turn for value. You like port to keep them off of Eidolon specifically? I agree. Alright, a goblet guide. Revealing Magus of the Moon. Not at its best in this matchup. Uh, so it's sort of unfortunate in many ways that we drew the Magus. Like, continuing on the train of I want to get value, I am not going to play the Dire Fleet Daredevil even though it has first strike. I'm going to play this Magus and make my opponent use a removal spell on it or otherwise trade it for the Goblin Guide and then use Dire Fleet Daredevil plus whatever burn spell they throw at me this turn to uh, burn my opponent. Go, Grey Ogre, go! Oh man, why'd they have to Rift Bolt it? That's awkward. Alright, Stoneforge Mystic has a draw. Stoneforge Mystic has a draw is great. And now I am fine with playing Dire Fleet Daredevil just as another guy. So like this way, in order for my opponent to like let me not connect with Jitte, they potentially need two removal spells. Or like they'll use Thunderous Wrath! All right, folks. My uh, my opponent has some big stones. Oh man, is my opponent drawing thunderous wrath and not miracling it? 
because that would make me so happy. Aw, oh, it's happening. Okay, never mind. I was gonna say, like, if you don't cast that, it's just dead. Oh, man. Oh, man. My opponent doesn't realize Darfleet Daredevil has first strike. It's happening. Oh, man. Read the card. Whew. Whew. I'm enjoying this game. So this is the difference between playing against a good burn opponent and a bad burn opponent, folks. In case you were curious. Well, I think my opponent is a new player since they have Thunderous Wrath in their deck. Like, my opponent should not have Thunderous Wrath in, in their deck. That card is terribly inconsistent, and that's not where you want to be as a burn deck. I'm gonna put this on the Stone Forge so that if my opponent kills one of my creatures, it's the Stone Forge and not the Dire Fleet Daredevil. Oh my gosh, my opponent doesn't have a bolt for me. Glorious. Uh, and I'm not gonna play play out this land because Price of Progress at this point is gonna be one of the only cards that can beat us. Alright, there's a price of progress, and I'm probably just going to gain some life in response here. Oh man, does my, my opponent just have a bolt after all of that? That'd be super disappointing. Alright. That's tilting. Double, double Fire Blast and Price of Progress to do 12 damage after my opponent misplays and has bad cards in their deck. Oh well. Game one, opponent throws away Goblin Guide into Dire for the Daredevil, but has double Fire Blast and Price to win anyway. Alright. Uh, this is a really bad matchup for the uh, red-white deck. Um, my opponent kind of had the nuts there in a game that I otherwise would have won. But, um, more generally, it is a tough matchup. Okay, uh, I'm gonna probably board out my slow card, like, my four drops in this matchup. I'll probably board out my Magus of the Moons. And while Revoker can hit a Grim Lava Mancer, um, it's otherwise dead against their deck, and I don't part particularly like that. And now I have to decide what I want to do with the last couple of slots. Um, recruiters can be really slow, but recruitering for uh, like Sanctum Prelate can be pretty insane. Uh, whether or not I have time to do that is another question entirely, though. Um, like maybe since I have two Prelates, I'm just supposed to do this. and just not play the recruiters for, like, extra copies of these cards. Because, like, generally speaking, most of the cards that I'm going to just naturally draw are going to be pretty good against burn. 
Although if I'm going to like board out the recruiters, then like the random one of Relic Warder loses some value. I could also just trim a random fetch land here to just like take one card out of my deck that doesn't uh, do me some damage. But like sort of conversely, even though I take one damage for a fetch land, it does get me a basic planes, which saves me, you know, one point of damage in the long term if my opponent actually does have the, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, words, price of progress. Um, a lot of times I keep Recruiter in in this matchup, but like since I have these Dire Fleet Daredevils that can get like good value, um, I think I'm just going to run it like this. Um, this is a fine hand. It is a little vulnerable to Price of Progress, which I don't like, but like it has all the right cards that I'm looking for so this doesn't get thrown back. Flooded's right is not better. I will take the extra card. Path to Exile is also pretty darn good. And uh, now I have to decide whether or not I want to take one from the fetch now or expose myself a little more to price of progress. Like, I'm going to be soft to, to price of progress this game, more or less, no matter what. So, like, maybe because of that, I'm supposed to just, like, play another plateau and accept that price of progress will be really, really good. I'll go ahead and get a basic. Like, I'll play around Price of Progress a little bit, because, like, with this Wasteland in my hand, I can get some utility out of my, uh, my own Wasteland, if my opponent has Price of Progress. I uh, reveal an Aether Vial. Not great. Oh man, I misplayed. I misplayed by fetching that early. Like, I should have used that fetch to shuffle away from a potential Goblin Guide trigger. Now I have to draw this Aether Vial that I don't necessarily want. Whoops. And, like, here I would love for my opponent to just, like, jam another creature that I can path the exile. Alright, my, my opponent suspends two Rift Bolts. Uh, now I have to think about how I want to navigate my opponent's next turn. So, if I put in the Thalia, it is going to eat it to one of the Rift Bolts and it'll only cost my opponent one more mana. So I kind of want to, like, put in the Thalia in my opponent's upkeep after they bolt me twice so they don't get to do another thing for their turn and I still have this Thalia around. I think that's what I'm going to do. It's a little bit weird to, like, not do a Thalia in the face of a taxing effect. Or I guess, like, if my opponent has yet another bolt in hand, then they can use that bolt to answer the Thalia. Hmm. Or maybe I am supposed to just trade the Thalia for a bolt effect. Yeah, maybe I need to protect my life total.
Because I don't want something like, uh... I was gonna say, like, I don't want something like Sulfuric Vortex coming down, and that would, that would prevent this for this turn, but they'd have to have another land anyway. And then they can do it on the following turn, and then if they do that, I can eat it with the Relic Order. Hey, for a, er, hey Phil, early game today? Yeah. This, this isn't the norm, but, like, I woke up early, I don't have anything to do until later this afternoon, so I figured, like, just jamming a few games was probably fine. Um, I'll probably do... One one league, and that'll be it for today. All right, you have an idol on. I'm not gonna path that because I have this relic order. And I'm not just going to remove it immediately. Because I want to see if I can make my opponent deal a little bit of damage to themselves and give me some value. Okay, so, so interesting spot. I can path to exile my Leon Relic Order to not take 3 damage from this Searing Blood, but if I do so, I don't have anything that gets the Eidolon off the table. So if I let the Searing Blood happen and then I path the Eidolon, I've taken 5 and I go down to 9, whereas if I don't do this, I'm still at 14, and if the Eidolon gets a few hits in before I draw a creature to answer it, or like another removal spell, that's probably fine. Um, this also does give me another land so that I have, like, if I have to wasteland myself for a price of, like, to get around a price of progress, that's fine. And I'm probably not casting any more creatures this game, since I have an Aether Vial in 2 and an Aether Vial in 3. And I'm definitely not casting this Aether Vial here. Um, I'll just pass the turn and hope I don't keep drawing Aether Vials. What do you say? They can bolt it in response to the trigger? Oh man, I love it when my opponent... Um, removes my Eidolon, with, or excuse me, removes my Relic Warder with the trigger on the stack. That's sweet for me. Uh, because, like, whatever they... they... Whatever I remove with my Leon and Relic Warder trigger, then is around forever. Or, excuse me, gone forever. Come on, Daredevil! Oh yeah, Dare Daredevil would be pretty sweet. Like, Violin, Daredevil, Searing Blood, their Eidolon. I'm all about that life. Alright. Canonist off Vile to trade with Eidolon is fine.
And now my opponent doesn't get to play another spell this turn unless they trade the um, Eidolon for my Canonist. And I'm obligated to accept the trade. I am just dead if my opponent has, like, Bolt Bolt or Equivalent. Which it looks like. Alright, and they suspend a Rift Bolt. Well, that's real bad. Yeah, alright, Stoneforge Mystic Pal, you were just, uh, one turn too late. Uh, we're gonna play it out and see if my opponent is bad, and we'll just Bolt my Stoneforge Mystic. I don't think it's gonna happen. Like, 100% it should not happen. But I'll see. All right, can my opponent click properly? Rift Bolt, very, very skill testing card. There's a lot of clicks you have to make. All right, and we died. We lost the match. Um, I, yeah, I don't, I don't expect to, to win against Burn. So like, my opponent just had a ton of direct damage that game, um, and drawing the redundant Aether Vials hurt a little bit. That's, that's sort of an unfortunate, like, both of those games we were one turn away from tur turning the corner, and that's, like, how the burn matchup does tend to go, and, and I accept that. Um, I'm not doing anything actively to try to make the, uh, the matchup better. <laughs> Playing the batter skull, you remove the incentive to kill Stoneforge Mystic. <laughs> sure, so I should have, uh, like, just equipped it with Jitte, like, fetch Jitte, equip it with Jitte can make them try to bolt that. Yeah. Like, um... <laughs> like, there, there is absolutely no reason why my opponent will, will throw the bolt at not me when I'm at 3 life. I'm just kind of being facetious and talking while I stream as I die. Uh, so for anyone who joined and didn't see the deck list at the beginning here, we, we were playing uh, a Direfleet Daredevil list again today. Uh, the only change I made from last night was I'm trying a Surgical Extraction over the Orzhov Pontiff. Um, though it was kind of a good card, like, it was it was very difficult to cast. And, like, a lot of the situations where you want to cast it, you need to cast it early on. And the mana base, as is, does not support that. If I want to support casting the, pont the Pontiff early on, I would need a Scrubland in the deck. Oh yeah, like, even if they, uh they, like, misplay and kill the Stoneforge. Like, they're still gonna just, like, kill me with whatever is on the top of their deck. Uh, this, this hand is, like, 90% to get Mulligan. I'm gonna, like, look and see if I have data on my opponent, but, um... Like, this hand has no business spells, and I have no data on my opponent. Uh, so this one, this one goes back, even though it has, like, some mana denial elements. Uh, this hand is acceptable. And a Stoneforge on the top is actually really, really good. So on the play versus Nomura sixteen seventy six. Nice hand I've got here. Well, we're uh, actually never mind. It, like island careful. Study discarding double reanimate is fine. Like, my opponent doesn't have a dude to pitch, and I have a Caracas. This is fine. Huh. 
do I want to play the Stoneforge Mystic into a potential counterspell? I haven't looked at blue-black reanimator decks in a while. I don't know, like, what configuration of counterspells they're, they're running currently. But my opponent's hand is pretty slow. Like, I can probably just wait it out. Uh, I'm going to take a second to just, like, take a look at some blue-black reanimator decks. Like, if there are even any in recent results. Like, if it's just Force, I'll probably play Stoneforge. But if it's like they're running Force and Days these days, then I'll probably wait a turn. Oh, it looks like my internet. Or maybe the page is just not loading. So like I'll just go to Goldfish instead. My internet connection. Oh, my internet connection on my laptop is sputtering in and out. So I guess I'll just jam in that case. You don't see any blue black reanimator on goldfish? Yeah, like I haven't I haven't seen that deck around in a long time. So what's what's the word? Are they running days and force or just force or neither? Three three days or force. Okay. Uh, sort of the nice thing is that even if my opponent does something like uses a discard spell on me, uh, which they're not doing, um, I would have a backup piece of equipment still. Recruiter's really good. I'm not entirely sure what it's going to get just yet. Um, it'll probably get a Thalia. Maybe a Palace Jailer, depending on where things go. Yeah, my, my opponent is really behind on a number of fronts, basic planes. So, so yeah, I, I agree. If they go and do something like just daze me, um, like... How are they supposed to win? Get a daredevil! Getting a daredevil is, like, actually not unreasonable. Because, like, that would allow me to reanimate. Which is sweet. All right, my, my opponent just scoops it up. I don't even need to think about that. All right, so my opponent's playing against Blue Black Reanimator, and I win game one. So game one, re really my opponent whiffed on their careful study, and then that lost them the, game, the game. Um, the fact that I have Caracas as well is really, really good for me. Alright, so this random surgical I decided to play is going to be great. And really most of my sideboard is pretty good. Like, legitimate cards that I would consider bringing in are these. So, um, in this matchup I will probably entirely cut my Stoneforge Mystic package because I have so many cards that I can bring in. I'll cut P and K. It's not particularly good here. Um, Magus is so so. Revoker so so. Flicker Wisp is so so. The Jailer is slow. My opponent ended up with two basics, and I don't think they fetched for either, so my opponent might actually have a fair number of basics rather than just one of each. I'll probably Trim Magus. Like, 
Re Revoker gets Grizzlebrand and Lotus Petal. That might not be enough. Like, I have so many hate cards for this matchup. Um, like, it's kind of ridiculous how well equipped I am for this matchup right now. So I guess keeping that in mind, I can get like get rid of the revokers and trim a flicker wisp. And I think I like something like this. I could honestly trim another Flicker Wisp too. They're like it's not particularly good against what my opponent is doing. I'll keep this hand, even though it doesn't have a piece of graveyard hate. It has both Caracas and Swords to Plowshares, so I have a like a legendary creature covered or a regular creature covered if my opponent doesn't interact with me. And Thalia is a fantastic draw. Why Daredevil in this matchup? Because even just something like getting a Ponder or a Brainstorm is fine. And on the random chance that I get to blow my opponent out with like reanimating one of their targets. Like that needs to stay in the deck. I think like the upside on Dar Darfly Daredevil is really, really high in this matchup. Uh, my opponent has gone for an underground C, which is interesting. I would I would think that they would probably play around Wasteland given the opportunity to do so. So that might mean that my opponent only had, had one land at the time that they cast the Brainstorm, or it might mean that they had so many lands that they don't care if one gets wasted. Hard to say. Alright, Pithing Needle. Pithing Needle will name Caracas, or, or maybe Wasteland if they're really land light, like I suspected. Oh, Royal Ramus, thank you for subscribing. Like, I really appreciate that. You know, pra praise be to Thalia. Praise be. Titus, you can barely see what's going on. Do you mean it's too small, or is, like, my quality bad? Well, my opponent has one land. So, this turn, it's uncounterable Thalia. Next turn, it's Wasteland. a second land. So they will get to do a thing, but like the next two turns I just wasteland them. I just want to play a 2-1 to double my clock, because if I if I don't play the Dire Fleet Daredevil, I might be behind like one turn on clock for um, just killing my opponent, and next turn I'm going to get to Brainstorm, or no, next turn like I'm going to Wasteland anyway, so like, I'm fine with just playing this as a dude. Oh, do I have to exile the brainstorm? Alright, no, I have to exile the brainstorm. Oh well. 
I, I don't think it's gonna matter. Like, even if my opponent casts a spell, I wasteland them again. And again, since like I have my opponent so dead, I'm just gonna cast this as a generic duder. I know it's not what we want him to do. I know we want to reanimate my opponent's Grizzlebrand or something stupid like that, but let's just put my opponent on a two-turn clock and have Mama's backup for if something goes wrong. Yeah, okay. So my opponent is just literally 100% dead to my board now. Like, zero outs to it. Okay, maybe not zero. They could massacre. They could go, like, land massacre. Yeah, so, like... This is this is what I was talking about, like, even when Direfleet Daredevil is not at its best, it just being a 2-1 with first strike is not the worst. So, it, is it Massacre? Like, ma Massacre is the only card that can beat me here. Yep. And we got it. Alright, so we're on the draw for that game, and we win. Um, so, game two, win with... Thalia, and two, Wasteland. Alright. Pretty happy with that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and run to the restroom real quick before I start up this next match. Here is the build that I am working with. Uh, if you have any questions, throw them in the chat, and I will be happy to answer them momentarily. Alrighty folks, sorry about the delay there. One of my roommates was in the bathroom upstairs, so I had to go and run downstairs. Alright, uh, so for anyone who doesn't know me, I'm Phil Gallagher of Thraben University, and today I am playing Death and Taxes with Dire Fleet Daredevil. Won the die roll against Red Armada. Let's see if I have any data on this player. Um, my opponent has played a lot of things. Most recently, Eldrazi Post. But they've also played like Elves and Turbo Depths and such. 
Um, uh, this hand doesn't have any action, but it starts off with like a vial and port start that will give me time to draw into things. So I think I'm fine with keeping it. It's it's a little soft. I'm I'm treating this match like I don't know anything about my opponent. Like since my opponent plays multiple decks, they might have something like a mana trader subscription. So like they could be on anything. All right, there's a chalice on one. I forgot that it was a match. My opponent basically did nothing all match. Uh, you're not wrong. Drawing a land there isn't great, but, like, the combination of this port and vial should do great things. Depending on how much mana my opponent has, this may or may not greatly inconvenience them. Drawing Jitte is okay. I will cast that a turn down the line when I can still port. Probably be keeping my vial on two for the next turn. All right, super punished by the thought not sheer for not jamming Jitte, but like it could have been worse. It could have been something like an Oblivion so or or an Endbringer if I didn't port. So no no regrets. I'm gonna go ahead and keep my vial on two for a turn. Um, Batter Skull is an acceptable draw. I hope I do not get thought knotted again. As long as I don't get thought knotted again, like this batter skull has the potential to just take over the game. I go ahead and tap the Eldrazi Temple and make my opponent pay life if they want to use their extra mana. Second thought not is devastating. So we are down our two best pieces of equipment. And Direfleet Daredevil is a 2-1 with first strike in this matchup in all likelihood. Yuck. Oh, you know that guy IRL? Well, you can congratulate him on just pummeling the crap out of me. I, I expect that we're at about approximately 5% to win this game. Oh, you know me, IRL. Oh, hi. What if I warping whale? They're all it's dust. Mmm. I don't think I want to quite chump block yet. Because I'd like to see if I can trade multiple bodies for a Thought Knot Seer. Oblivion Sower. Sure, that's fine. You're gonna, like, hit my wastelands, too? You get a Caracas and a Stone Forge and a Flicker Wisp. Alright, 
Do one pirate friend. Come on. <sighs> Technically not dead yet. Um, let's see if I can get some value off this Flicker Wisp. I, I can flicker the Thought Not Seer, draw a card with it, try to cast the card, or I can use the Flicker Wisp to, like, get rid of something in combat. Um, what can I draw that's great? Drawing Sword of Fire and Ice would give me something that can stonewall the Thought Knots, and then I chump block with Oblivion Sower for a turn. Drawing a Thalia is not good because Caracas is going to make me sad on the other side of the table. Drawing a Stoneforge Mystic gets me a sword. Like, the the issue is that if I use the Slickerous to Fog on my opponent's turn, then, like, they're just going to take the card back with a Thought Knots here. So, like, unless I, like, hard cast Flicker Wisp and then draw a 3 drop that I can violin. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do this now. Okay. Okay. We're off to a start. I'm thinking about whether or not I want to remove the Thought Knots here or the Oblivion Sower, because it's a real choice. Like... Now I can trade Flicker Wisp and Mom for a Thought Knot Seer. If I get rid of the Thought Knot Seer and I draw another card that I can cast, that's great. I kind of want to get rid of the Oblivion Sower, trade with a Thought Knot Seer this turn, and then hope to draw another creature that can trade with the other Thought Knot Seer. Because I can't just beat the bulk of the Oblivion Sower right now. Alright. That's what I'm going to do. Oh my god. Oh god. Chalice. Chalice is a great magic card. Yep, okay, that's fine. It's not like I really threw away a card, though. Because, like, it just would have gotten taken by the Thought Knots here anyway. So, like, I just wasted one mana that probably doesn't matter. <sighs> um. One, two, three, four. I actually kind of want to... No, parting the Crocs doesn't do anything. I was going to say, like, maybe I port the Crocs to, like, prevent them from bouncing a Thalia that I play until their turn, but that doesn't actually matter. You just, like, going to play and equip the Jitte now and just, like, make me cry even more? Alright. Alright, fine. Walking Ballista, unbeatable. Alright. So we're playing with Direfleet Daredevil Taxes. We're playing against uh, what looks to be regular Eldrazi. We were on the play and we lost to Red Armada. So game one, lost to double Thought Knots here for B-Skull and Jete. Um, that was unbeatable. Like, w once my opponent did that, I wasn't coming back from that. Um, and, and that was very, very clear from early on. I think you play I played against you at Eternal Weekend. I'd, I'd believe it. You can, you can double-check my tournament report and cross-reference it with yours if you want and, like, confirm. But I, I, I played a lot of people at Eternal Weekend. It was a blast. All right, so these are the pile. This is the pile of cards that I'll probably bring in, um, or at least I will consider bringing in. 
the first thing it goes is Mom. It is just stone cold dead in this matchup. Like, it does nothing. And then after that, I tend to drop some number of Thalias. Um, although Dire Fleet Daredevil might be worse than Thalia. Um, my opponent could have Warping Whale, Dismember, or Spatial Contortion that I could cast. And I'm not going to cast their all as dust or anything like that. Um, so this might be a matchup where good old Dire Fleet Daredevil just sits out and then I board out one Thalia. And I'm boarding in extra removal, something that trades with a Thought Not Seer, um, something that can answer a Chalice or a... Uh, words, not, uh, the Pithing Needle that's two mana that lets you look at their hand. Uh, Sorcerer's Spyglass. Um, I tend to board out more than just two Thalias in this matchup usually, but like, since Dire Fleet Daredevil is just going to be a 2-1 with First Strike, a 2-1 with First Strike that's also disruptive is just going to be better. And then PNK generates a ton of blockers, uh, which can be really, really relevant. <laughs> I would like to play first. Um, this hand has three Caracas, so like it's already essentially a mold of five. It'd be a good five, but like I'm gonna try it for better than that. Oh, this hand's bad. This hand is really bad. Uh, for this hand to be workable, I need a white source. A true white source. If I get the true white source, then double swords to plowshares is insane. If I don't get the true white source, I lose. Is this better than a mult of five? So how many white sources do I have in my deck, like actual white sources? I'm going to actually look at that before I keep this hand, because it's a big deal. Alright, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 hits. And I have a, like a scry in 2 to 3 turns to hit 1 of 13. Um, not the best, but maybe good enough. I'll keep. Wasteland is not what I want, but I'm still going to top that because it'll buy me time. Disrupting my opponent's mana is really, really valuable in, in this matchup. Um, since a lot of their good plays require 4 to 6 mana, wasting them off a soul land is devastating. Oh, this is going to be super unfortunate. So my opponent is going... Actually, no, my opponent is going to Sorcerer Spyglass and Namor Schadenport in the face of nothing else here. So that's okay. Alright, so my opponent is working with perfect information and they've shut off my port. I kind of need to draw a white source in the next two turns. Even though I have the Flicker Wisp, I'm going to put this on human. Because, like, I have this Flicker Wisp in hand, but I'm more likely to draw a two-drop human that matters. And I would still need another white source for the Flicker Wisp anyway. Alright, so if Thought Not gets my swords, or my Path to Exile, and then if I draw a white source, I can still source to plowshare it. Alright. We're in the game. And I'm doing this now so that if I draw a two drop that I can cast, I can just jam it. Alright. That's solid. 
And we'll just put this on Walking Ballista because that card is terrifying. Um, walking Ballista is colorless removal at instant speed that gets like three for one value in a lot of cases. All right, uh, so my opponent is is on a post version. Follow up thought knots here. All right, the recruiter's gone. We're not in the worst of positions. And that's actually an okay draw. I don't know how many of you have like actually played with Sorceress Spyglass since it doesn't fit into a lot of legacy decks, but this card is just really, really powerful. Um, I've had, uh, I've really enjoyed playing that card in Mono Red Prison. Even when it's not great, uh, it has value. Sort of unfortunate that I'm getting very little value off of this Flicker Wisp. Like under normal circumstances, I can just Flicker a land and then use use it to port. Yeah, my opponent has drawn a lot of Thought Knot series. Like, we got two in game one. Ah, my opponent's on the big version. This is bad. Whatever this is, I don't like it. Alright, you Oblivion, so are me. What, what went to exile? Alright, they get a planes, although they took two Ether Vials off my deck, so I'll thank them for that. Alright, opponent, do you have more big haymakers for me? I hope not, because, like, this is the best I've got. I will go ahead and attack with the Wisp. My opponent can crash in and hit me with the Oblivion Sower if they want. But, like, they probably don't want to trade the Germ for Dot Knots here. So I'm just scared of something like All is Dust that costs a billion D mana. Alright, that that qualifies as something that I'm scared of. Um, I'm stone cold dead to that. Uh, so stone cold forge can fetch a jitte. But like this is this is just too much. I'm overwhelmed. Oh, that's unfortunate. Alright, so we were on the play that time, and we lost. So game two, lost to Olamog, the Ceaseless Hunger. Um, otherwise, we had that game pretty well locked down, but that was, that was incredibly good. Alright, back in we go. Kind of surprised by no attack with Thought Knot. Um, so I had Flicker Wisp and Revoker in play, so my opponent doesn't want to trade their Thought Knot for two of my creatures and give me another card when they have really good plays for the next two turns. Like they might be scared of something like a Magus of the Moon or a Cataclysm coming off um, on my turn and just like wrecking what they can do, so they don't want to give me another card to get to that. Um, that's what I imagine was happening there. 
Uh, so for anyone who doesn't know me and you've just turned in, hi, my name's Phil Gallagher. I run Thraben University, and I'm a death and taxes enthusiast, to say the least. We're playing with Dire Fleet Daredevil today, and uh, he's been bros. He, he's been a 2-1 a guy on a handful of occasions, but other times he's let me brainstorm and ponder and lightning bolt. Um, it's a slightly awkward card on a number of levels. It doesn't really play particularly well with Thalia Guardian of Thraben or Rest in Peace. Um, but, like, pondering and then shuffling with Stoneforge or one of my fetch lands feels pretty great. Um, I went 6-4 with it last night. Um, which is fine. Like, that's 2-3-2 that's two, two leagues, and, you know, I'm kind of on track to do another 3-2 league here. You know, we'll, we'll see how it goes if I can ever get paired for this next match. I'm just going to take a minute to update my spreadsheet a little more with the last couple of things I did. So I'm going to Lost Burn, Lost Reanimator. And let's see what we get this time. Captain Haddock, you say? Oh man, my opponent's playing a deck that is gonna, like, destroy me. Uh, I'm gonna keep this hand, it's reasonable. Um, my opponent is playing sort of a, like, Dead Guy Ale deck with, like, Dark Confidant, Stoneforge Mystic, Palace Jailer, Liliana the Veil, Liliana the Last Hope, Lingering Souls, Vindicates. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Moto Shuffler. Thank you for this Swords to Plowshares. I appreciate it. Praise be. And my opponent gave up Athalia to Bob on turn one. A lot of things went right there. Whew. Ugh. Oh, gosh. All right. So, my opponent got the two best hits in my hand there, probably, with the, with grabbing the Sword of Fire and Ice and the, uh, the Thalia as well. Uh, but I get to Stoneforge. Um, my opponent is low on resources, so either one of these cards can be really, really good. I kind of want to just, like, get the Jitte and try to win the Equipment War. The, like, if I get the Batter Skull and my opponent removes the Stoneforge, then, like, the Batter Skull sits in my hand and probably just gets hemmed. So I'm gonna need the Jitte that I can deploy next turn either way. Like, my opponent hasn't had the opportunity to cast a removal spell yet. So. Oh. Neat. No need to violin that card um, with Stoneforge's ability. Alright, so my opponent is resource light in some way or has something like a Vindicate that they'll cast now to get rid of the Jose. Uh, their own Stoneforge. They get a batter skull. I can remove the Stoneforge here, but if my opponent goes land and then has a Batter Skull, like, I don't beat the Batter Skull, so I kind of want to not remove the Stoneforge and just let them put it in, and then I can beat the Batter Skull in combat with my Jitte and Stoneforge. Um, like, since my opponent hasn't done anything for the last two turns, really, 
like before they played the Stoneforge. I think they just have lands in hand. So I'm not going to remove the Stoneforge. Since I'm so action light in my hand. Yeah, okay, so there's there's the land I suspected, so remove not removing the Stoneforge was correct. Alright, Liliana the Veil. Sure. There's my own batter skull, which will be quite good. And I, I have some extra lands to insulate it from Lily. And again, I'm not going to remove his Stoneforge Mystic because once I have my own batter skull, my Jitte will help me beat his batter skull. Alright. That's fine. We'll see if I actually get to deploy my batter skull or not, or whether it just gets hemmed here. So, I guess there is some merit in removing the Stoneforge Mystic, because it changes the clock by a turn. And I might end up like having to discard the Batter Skull if things go wrong, and if I let my opponent keep the Stoneforge, then they can just keep bouncing their Batter Skull, whereas I have to keep hard casting mine. So I changed my mind on that. Uh, thank you for stopping by. Glad you got to see part of the stream this time. Um, so I can play a land and mom and then lose my batter skull if my opponent pluses. But my opponent is pretty likely to minus. And now I show them the red that I was holding back showing them. We'll see, it, it is possible that my opponent just plays whatever card they has and then plus the Lily to get rid of what's in my hand. They don't they don't know how valuable it is, so we're going to see whether they value getting the mom off the board for protection or whether they value keeping their Lily alive. Ooh, Vindicate the Jitte. Alright. Now they plus, that makes sense. change my clock, I am going to go ahead and fetch to uh, thin my deck a little bit. <sighs> Alright, not the best use of a card, but this is where I'm at. My opponent wants to keep the lily alive. I'm getting in, getting in the red zone. I play a second mom. My opponent will bounce their batter skull and redeploy their batter skull this turn. Um, and then plus lily, but I can use mom to protect against black and keep attacking Lily. All right, land, not the best draw. Yeah. 
and I'm getting aggressive with these moms because, like, I need to keep this Lily in check. If I just sit back and use them to protect from the germ hits right now, um, I'm in real danger of just, like, losing this game to the Lily. So, like, this is the exact sort of card I would want to draw. So I get to Flicker Wisp, I get to Blink their Germ. I get to attack the Lily for two. This puts the Lily down to one, my opponent bounces their Batter Skull, I pork them, and they can like... Lily plus and Batter Skull? but they're not going to get another body off of what they have here. And then my Flicker Wisp goes and finishes off Liliana. And I'll have Mom, or Mom times two, to deal with what they have. Alright, my opponent drawing Death Rite's really good for them. Um, they're at a really high life total. So, like, I am dead to this death right in four turns, and it doesn't matter that I have invalidated their batter skull. Uh, so now I'm hoping to draw a revoker, or a removal spell, or a palace jailer, or... Uh, oh, nice Bob, too. Alright. Hoistland, not the best here. Joy, a Stoneforge Mystic. That's not terrifying at all. So, like, if they have a Jitte in their deck, too, that's rough. Which I assume they do. Yep. Ugh, more land. Not good. Just play it out so it doesn't get like hymned or something random like that. Alright, so we have one more draw step to not be dead. So I can go. a recruiter or equivalent for palace jailer or I can just draw another land all right uh, I don't know that my opponent drew particularly hot um, so much as I just flooded I was on the draw I lost to captain haddock Um, like, the, de the Death Rite Shaman was a very important draw. I could have dealt with a lot of the rest of their stuff, but not that. Okay, so... My opponent is sort of playing a Stoneforge Mystic generic value deck, so we need to do things that will help us keep up with their value. Um... Cards in this pile on the left are the cards that are really good. The cards in the pile on the right are things that I would consider. 
Um, I can expect that my opponent will have some number of annoying things out of their sideboard, ranging from, like, Zealous Persecution, to Containment Priest, to, like, I don't even know what else, but, like, Zealous Persecution is what I'm really worried about. Uh, what do I want to get rid of in this matchup? This probably isn't the best Magus of the Moon matchup, since my opponent has Chrome Mox to get around it. I don't know that my opponent quite has enough to make me want to bring in Rest in Peace. Like, they're gonna have Deathrite Shaman and maybe Lingering Souls, but like, I don't know whether that will be worth an entire card. I also don't necessarily want to board that in because Dire Fleet can do some really disgusting things with the tools my opponent have has in their deck. Um, maybe PNK is too mana intensive versus another Wasteland deck. I guess I can trim some Thalias. Like, maybe I'm supposed to actually get rid of most of my Thalias, since they're not particularly great against what my opponent has going on. And, like, it's good against the Bob side of things. It is also possible that I'm just overloading on removal a little bit too much. I'll try this for this match. And then I'll spend a little more time thinking about it. Um... This hand is really slow. This 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 hand has nothing until turn three. Like it has lands and spells, but nothing that matters. My opponent does like an early Bob or Stone Forge. I just die with this hand. So this is a mulligan. This hand's great. This hand is really really great. That piece of equipment can go on bottom. So I'd like my opponent to lead on some land that I can waste land. Which didn't happen. Deathrite Shaman is devastatingly good against my hand. Drawing another vial there is not good. I want gas at this point. I'll pass the turn. We'll see if we get blown out by a containment priest just wrecking us. Alright. Pretty dead here. We'll potentially get an active mom, but I lose all of the gas in my hand. They have five cards left. I have a mom and two vials and can't cast a lot of spells. Alright, that is acceptable. Darfully Daredevil would be a great draw. I'm just going to throw that out there. I would love to him to Turok my opponent when I'm this far behind. I guess if my opponent is going to Zealous Persecution me, I want it to be when it's only for one of my cards. Alright, they get, they get my entire board between those two cards. This is fine. This is fine. <laughs> Alright.
So there, there was some amount of consideration to wastelanding my opponent and then in second main phase instead using the revoker. <sighs> can't, can't win this match. Uh, basic planes. I now now agree. Opponent is drawing pretty hot. I I accept that. All right. Let's see if we can get the blowout. We stole that one back, folks. I did not deserve that one. Wow. Okay. Thank you, Leon and Relic Order. So, we... We stole game two with... With Relic Order there. Praise, praise be to Thalia for that one. Did not, did not deserve that win with how we were drawing. Um, so do I want to change anything else about what I was doing? Like, I have a decent amount of removal. I have protection. I have a lot of value-oriented cards towards the top end. Um, I think all of this stuff is better than Thalia. I'll keep this one. Like, I have so many good value-oriented cards in my hand that so long as this Aether Vial sticks around, I'm in really good shape. About the Exile, not the removal spell I wanted to draw for Deathrite Shaman, but, like, it wasn't like I was going to, um, sword Deathrite Shaman over, cast the stuff that's in my hand anyway. Oh, my opponent is on a one-lander. Uh, how many basics does my opponent have? It's probably like two to three. I might end up pathing these death rites, I might not. I hope my opponent plays something else that I can path. Because I'd like really like to just revoke the death rites. So I think I will probably not not path the death rites. Try to revoke them and then try to ride out the rest of my hand to victory. All right, Stoneforge Mystic, you bet. It's a Jitte. I don't even think I want to path the stone forge. Yeah, I, I agree. Like, path is quite good for him. <laughs> My opponent says your one lander is way better than mine, I think.
All right, and now we get another land, which is awesome. So like I can recruiter of the guard for a revoker, revoke Jitte. Or I can recruit the guard for a stone forge and just try to get my own Jitte. What do I care about my opponent doing? I can just recruit the guard for Thalia. So you say recruiter for mom? That's reasonable, but I, I think I just want to lock, like, lock my opponent out of casting a removal spell, unless they get multiple lands. Like, and then on my next turn, I can recruit, like, recruiter Flicker Wisp and start doing that whole song and dance. Oh man! Jeez, look at my opponent's hand. Yeah, with, with one more land, uh, I could not have beaten them. Like, like especially if it was a fetch land and they got to, like, drop Lily the Last Hope and then follow it up with any number of those cards. Um, I understand why my opponent kept their hand. Like, there's there's so much gas there. Like, if they started with, like, one land, Death Rite, Stoneforge, and, like, Him, Him, Decay, or, like, any combination of those cards, like, I, un I understand my opponent keeping there. All right, so game three, we win with Revoker on Deathrite Shaman. Hey Phil, how's it going? How's Direfleet Daredevil been treating you? Um, pretty well. It's it's done a lot of very interesting things. Uh, there have been a couple of times where I've just played it as a, you know, a 2-1 duder. But, um, it's, it's gotten us a handful of cantrips. It's still kind of early on in, in the testing session to see whether or not it is, like, absurdly good. Alright, against MW Bagels. What sort of data do I have on them? They were last seen in November on Landstill. I guess blue white stands still more accurately. I'll keep this. Like, if my opponent is just playing any any sort of like controlling-ish deck, like this has a Thalia, this has a Magus of the Moon, those are great cards. We see in here. Not the deck they were playing before, that's for sure. Oh, I lied. They've just changed colors. So I have options. But I think I'm just gonna crack their standstill right away. Like, I'm fine with giving them the cards. I'm going to give them cards that hopefully they can't do anything with. Because I'm going to curve Thalia into Magus of the Moon, and, like, they might spend their turn answering the Thalia, and then I just stick Magus of the Moon and they flop around and die. And, my, like, it's, it's also very likely that my opponent might discard a card. So, like, they have nine cards in hand right now. If they don't go land and spell on their turn, then they have to discard
So, um, I'm going to jam Magus. I'll have two planes. My opponent will have a Swamp. And the rest of their stuff is off, and they just use the Fatal Push. So I really like my position. How does stand still deck? How does stand still deck to win after they draw a bunch of cards? I mean, don't you win just by drawing cards? Like that's the whole reason you play that deck. Um, but in all seriousness, we might see like uh, Mishra's Factory as a win condition, or Snapcaster Mage beats, or um, Jace the Mind Sculptor. Um, those are the most common win conditions. In the blue white version, we instead see. Uh, uh, that's really good for my opponent, just like having the island. Um, in the blue-white version, we sometimes see Myth realized as an alternate win condition. I think my Magus of the Moon is going to die to a Snapcaster Fatal Push. And there's not a lot I can do about that. So I think I'm going to let that happen, and then, like, Dire Fleet, Daredevil, and Ponder, and then potentially fetch away this Batter Skull, or, like, Wasteland them, depending on what's happening. We're, we're probably going to Ponder. Alright. Well, that's a good sign. Oh, my opponent is F6. Um, how do I feel about this combination of cards? I don't love the cavern, but the Flicker Wisp is good value with Dire Fleet Daredevil if my opponent plays another instant that I can get with it, or like I can just exile the Fatal Push so it's not an out later. Um, and Dahlia is a fine creature in this matchup. So I'm going to put the cavern on bottom. And then I'm going to put Flicker Wisp on top so I get that first. Hey, just turned in. Um, glad, glad you're here. Um, what is your view on Daredevil after a day of testing? I mean, it's really interesting. Like, you know, um, you, you, you just saw that we got to ponder. And that's pretty sweet, that's not something I'm supposed to be able to do. And even though, like, that's not the best value for a card, it's still working out quite well for us. Um, and when it works out really well, it's insane. Flickering uh, Daredevil seems like so much value. I agree. And, like, right now, I am flickering it purely to get that Fatal Push out of the graveyard. No intentions of casting it. I just don't want, like, Snapcaster Fatal Push to be a line my opponent can take. Oh, I should have cast my Jote. That was a misplay.
Alright, what, what is my opponent doing? They're, they're tapping and untapping some lands. So on... Okay, so someone asked about, like, why am I attacking with this Magus of the Moon if I'm worried about Snapcaster Mage? Um, on the following turns, I'm going to have, like, Jitte counters with Dire Fleet Daredevil. Ah, I see. So my opponent is just, like, trying to draw some extra cards with another standstill. Uh, so I'm getting a little bit punished by not playing my Jitte. But, like, if this is my opponent's best option for turn... They have to give me three cards if they crack their standstill. So, that's neat. A sec, how did that push get exiled? Um, Dire Fleet Daredevil. So I Flicker Wisped it, so it entered the battlefield again. And even though I didn't cast it, Dire Fleet Daredevil just exiles the Fatal Push trigger. The, the Fatal Push with its trigger. So it's a little different from Snapcaster Mage in that regard. Um, so my opponent played a standstill, and then Fatal pushed my Magus after playing the standstill so that I get to draw some cards. Let's all just uh, let that soak in while I, I take a picture of that one. Hmm. We'll just title that picture, Value. Is that good? Is that good? And now I can fetch away... Or no. Pernicious Deed. Okay. So how do I want to deal with this deed? Like I can just play P and K and make them have to blow it for four, which is most of their mana. And if they don't blow it on my turn, I can just huck some Thopters at them. Kind of like that. Wasteland their wasteland so that they can't take me off of either double red or my Caracas to protect P and K. Pernicious deeds and they're done dirt cheap. All right, Star Streak, that was that was solid. I enjoyed that. All right, Brew Magic. Or Bruce by the Magic Guy. I'll read your, your comment in just a minute. It's pretty long, so I want to give it full attention. Okay, looks like my opponent is thinking. All right, I like the deck concept. However, something that keeps Snapcaster in check is Deathrite Shaman. The Daredevil could actually flash something back thanks to being unexpected, but only with the help of Aethervile in that case. Just my thoughts. Glad to see you testing interesting cards. Yeah, so like... There is some tension against Deathrite Shaman decks, 
but like at the same time, it's really good against Deathrite Shaman because when your opponent is on a deck like Grixis Delver and they go and do something like, um, you know, bolt your guy, there's a bolt in the graveyard, I'll tap my Deathrite Shaman for mana, and then like you get the opportunity to like direfleet Daredevil and then bolt their Deathrite. Like those those sorts of plays can be really insane. Alright. What you got, opponent? You got that sweet, pernicious deed over there. Which is real annoying. But I've got P and K. Which is even more annoying. So of note, um, P and K right now can't be Fatal Pushed or Abrupt Decayed. So this is going to be 4 mana for blowing the deed. I'll try to bounce P and K, and we'll see if they have something that can get rid of it. No! You're just going to like stand still? Yeah sure, you can stand still. So, like, my opponent's gonna get a bunch of cards, but I don't know how they beat P and K. If I'm just, like, being completely honest. Um... In case my opponent has a Wasteland, I'm going to put a second one of these on Human, rather than putting it on Artificer, so that all the stuff in my hand remains uncounterable. Someone in chat says mom and P and K. I agree. Uh, so Haster says, I see you really changed your mind about Daredevil. Um, so I, I am still largely of the same opinion that I am before of, like, that it's a card that has a really, really high ceiling, but a very low floor as well, and that its average power level isn't necessarily great. Um, although I will say that I underestimated how good it would be to just, like, randomly ponder and brainstorm. Um, I, I will say that I, I underestimated how good that would be. Like, um, you know, when I was conceptualizing the card and, and thinking over a bunch of scenarios, like, I thought of a lot of really cool things I could do, but I thought on average, like, it wouldn't be that great. Um, uh, but it turns out that, like, just getting a Brainstorm or a Ponder is good enough to be, like, worth the card slot. Um, I, I don't know that I'll keep playing this build yet, because, like, I keep going, like, 3-2 with it, but, like, assuming that I win this one. Um... Yeah, basic planes, and by that I mean, like, I underestimated Brainstorm in this shell, where, like, you can't necessarily shuffle every time, but I'm finding that, like, I'm just finding ways to shuffle between, like, my fetch lands and my stone forges and whatnot. Alright. So my opponent did fetch, right? Yep. Alright, so I'll bounce P and K. You have to use another removal spell on it right now. Stifle. Okay. It's really good to know that my opponent has Stifle. But, like, I still have a Mom and two Thopters remaining from all of that, so that's fine. My opponent's at six. Innocent Blood. I'll sack a Thopter. 
Diabolic Edict. I'll sack another Thopter. Alright. So my opponent is very resource light. So I think I'm gonna play Jitte, play Uncounterable Thalia, port my opponent's Mishra's Factory as my turn. I haven't given my opponent really a chance to counter something, so it's possible that this Jitte just gets forced, but like I'm super happy if it does, because then my opponent has no gas left. Uh, instead of porting my opponent, I can also just play a Revoker on Deed. That might be better. Well, let's stream Mono White pretty soon. Um, I've been playing a lot of different versions of DNT. Um, I will probably stream Mono White some random time. So, like, Deed is one of the few cards that can beat my board, so I think I am gonna just, like, slam a Revoker on Deed. So now I have, like, Athalia that is protectable by Caracas, two creatures protected by Mom, and I've shut off Deed. Is he bug Nick fit and he didn't draw Veteran Explorers? I don't think so, not with, like, these standstills. Like, we've seen three standstills this game. Oh, Lily on the Veil is super interesting. I don't know what I'm supposed to sacrifice. I think it's going to be Revoker, since I have another Revoker. I don't think I want to open up my opponent's remo removal spells, like, when I'm this far ahead. My opponent's going to animate their Mishra's Factory, and I'll port it in response. Now I'll kill it. There is some merit in not killing it there to just present lethal with Thalia on the next turn. But I'm pretty sure I've got this one locked up either way. No, I did not have to kill the factory. Alright, so my opponent goes Abrupt Decay on the Revoker. So I can cast Batter Skull, port a land, and then if my opponent has Pernicious Deed, 
even with like a land, they're not going to be able to get the batter skull off the table. I think it, there's literal no difference in what land I tap here. Like, they have so much colored mana. Oh, it does kill the germ. Okay, that's true. Uh, you mentioned that you've been on 3-2. Have you another list that puts up better results? Um, my red-white taxes deck has been going back and forth between, uh, like, 3-2 and 4-1 finishes a lot of times, and I have a couple, I have a whole bunch of 5-0s with it. Uh, so after all that, was I in player draw? It's on the draw. So I'm on the draw win versus MW Bagels. So game one win via via attrition over a very long and drawn out fight. Uh, so uh, yeah, so so I get um. If my opponent was abrupt decaying it, that might have been a sign that they had a follow-up removal spell as well. Um, and I didn't explicitly say that, so sorry about that. That's on me. Alright, uh, so against what looks to be a bug standstill deck, the Swords of the Plowshares only hit my opponent's man lands, so I'll probably board those out and just to try to play a more attrition-oriented game. Um... My opponent didn't show me anything that was, like, super amazing to make Rest in Peace worth bringing in, but my opponent might have something like Life from the Loam that would be pretty annoying, and I don't think I saw Snapcaster Mages, but they've got to be in the deck. I think once I see them, I would consider bringing these in, but I don't want to bring them in, like, in the dark, so to speak, to shut off my Dire Fleet Daredevils, because Dire Fleet can probably do some pretty sweet things in this matchup. Um, I definitely want, like, more copies of, of P and K. Ballast Jailer can be a little bit risky. Like, maybe I should board out Palace Jailer. But it seems like the sort of thing where if I stick that early on, it's going to be devastatingly good. I guess I put Relic Order in the board in pile, but that's, uh... I, I guess it's good against a standstill off a of vial, but otherwise not so much. That might be too ambitious. And like, similarly, Canonist might just be okay. And I would still need one more cut. I guess if my opponent is a deed deck, I can board out a mom. And that would be fine. Not 100% on whether or not the Palace Jailer should be in the deck. My opponent didn't show us very many bodies that game, so I'll keep it. My opponent mulliganed. I'll keep my hand. It has two good pieces of action and some amount of other disruption. Uh, my opponent has mulliganed three cards. My opponent has kept a three-card hand. If their, uh, if their plan is to just go, you know... Like, other land stands still with a three-card hand. It's not unprecedented that they could win. I'm going to give my opponent a chance to stifle this fetch land. Like, they're down to two cards, and if they use a stifle on that, awesome. Alright, opponent did not have the standstill. That bodes poorly for them. And I'm just going to put them to the test and get the Batter Skull. Like, they, they have so few resources that if my opponent doesn't answer the Stoneforge and I put this Batter Skull in play, it's over. And I have a bunch of lands in hand, so like I can eventually just hard cast this Batter Skull anyway if the Stoneforge dies. Uh, 
I might not even put in the batter skull next turn if my opponent doesn't kill the stone forge. I might just like prelate on one and just stop all of their cantrips. And like their fatal pushes as well. And I could moon them too. Boy, I have all the options this turn. So my opponent has Abrupt Decay mana up, but they didn't actually Abrupt Decay? They, they like they probably would have Abrupt Decayed the Stoneforge given the opportunity to since I fetched Batter Skull. So I'm just going to play Wasteland Pass, and on their upkeep, I will Wasteland them. It stifles the wasteland, so I'll take this opportunity to go and put in a batter skull. It's not bad. So I can, I can port them, I can just Recruiter for something that I want to play immediately, like Recruiter for a Prelate, for example. Um, I can Flicker with my Stoneforge to just get another piece of equipment in my hand, but I think I want to save the Flicker with to reset the Batter Skull on the following turn. So keeping that in mind, I'm just going to play Port and Pass. And I'm going to port them in their upkeep so that they're more or less priced into just blowing this on three right now. Uh, why didn't they blow the deed on three? Did, it, did they get another land? No. Interesting. So I'm kind of, of of the opinion that my opponent just kind of gave up. And that, like, they just don't think they can win no matter what. I'm fine casting a Recruiter since it replaces itself. I just want to get a... This would be a great board for a palace jailer. But I think I'm just going to get my second prelate for one. Oh, that was a misplay. I should have just gotten Revoker and cast Revoker. Alright, I messed up and gave my opponent some value there. I got, I'm, I'm so, I was so far ahead this game that I just like missed the obvious line. 
because like there's just no way I can possibly lose this game. Alright, so that is my third 3-2 finish with this deck in a row. Um, which is which is fine. Like a a win percentage of, of 60% with a deck is is successful. I'm I'm not unhappy with that. Um I don't know that Dire Fleet Daredevil is is bad. I don't know that it's good yet, but it, it's certainly interesting and it opens up a lot of really weird lines. And I've seen a bunch of, of people misplay around Dire Fleet Daredevil already. Um, so for example, I played against a burn player who just attacked the goblin guide into it because they just thought it was like literal red snapcaster mage, but in, in a different color. Um, I've done some neat things with it. Um, for any of you who didn't see the screenshots from yesterday that I was showing off. Um, oh, wrong one. Like, here's me bolting my opponent for lethal when they have a Jace on board. Um, here's Dire Fleet Daredevil taking down two Gurmag Anglers. Is there any merit to porting during the draw step so the opponent doesn't get to manipulate their draw with Brainstorm? Um, so like, I'm going to port my opponent no matter what during their upkeep because I don't want to give them the possibility of casting things with more mana. Like, if my opponent Brainstorms there, what card can they draw to beat my board? Like, they have to get both bodies off the board with 1 to 2 mana. Like, I don't, I don't think there's any out for my opponent, and I opted to port the island instead of the swamp so they couldn't, like, fatal push one there and then, you know, use another removal spell on the other. So for my opponent to beat me, they have to do something like have land and two removal spells in their, I think, four cards. Um, so I'd rather just, like, cast it earlier rather than later, because what happens if they draw the Brainstorm for turn, and then they do that. Um, so I, I think I like what I did. Yeah, okay, I, I just said the exact same thing that I said. I, I agree. Well, well put. Um, so um, I'm going to go ahead and end the stream today. Uh, again, my regularly scheduled stream hours are on Monday and Wednesday evenings at 7 o'clock Eastern. If you enjoy my content, please follow me. I'm, I'm looking to grow the channel a little bit. I'm uh, hoping to become a Twitch partner. And in order to do that, I need to get my view numbers up a little bit. Um, so I hope to see you all again soon. I'll uh, keep my chat open for a minute. So if you have any questions, feel free to answer that. Otherwise, I'm going to find another stream to host you all in.